He sings as he works, his voice warm and soft as the late afternoon sun. The air is sweet with the tang of recently cut sugar cane. There's a practiced, almost soothing precision to the way he works. He looks up and nods hello. Make him malicious, he says to your unasked question. I sell the black strap in town. Farmers use it for feed. Bitter as hell, he grins. Got some set aside. He comes back with a murky flask, waving off any offer of payment. I ain't charging. Folks around here need what they can get. Makes a mean loaf of bread. He nods at the barrels. I'm about done filtering. Got to boil it next. Lend a hand. You help him haul the barrels over to the metal boiler. You pour in the juice and set the fire. It's hot work. He fetches water and dark bread, and you share the small meal and a smile. It's good to find another who takes joy in honest labor. Old oh, friend, it's good to see you again. I've been thinking about you often since we last met. Remember what we talked about before? The young man murdered? I can't get him out of my head. It's the kind of thing you hear about all the time, the kind of thing I've seen before, but I'm still thinking about him. You got time to talk? Maybe I don't have to be your preacher and we can just chat. You must have seen some pretty wild stuff on the road. What's the most exciting thing you've seen? You've got a pretty wild life, you know that? Authority? Each day people want different things from God. When I step up to the pulpit, I always need to decide which Jesus I will bring with me. Anger in the temple? Kindness to his cruelest captors? No, today it was the Jesus in the garden. Confused, desperate for assurance, doubtful. The most human the divine ever was. Hey, do you have any spooky campfire tales? Feels appropriate out here, right? Oh, you could rattle a congregation's bones, I bet. Fate and fortune? Well, crimes like this make destiny something easy to believe in. It washes our hands. It tells us there's nothing that could have been done but it washes the hands of the offender too. It is fearful resignation and nothing more. Lately, my journey's been pretty ordinary, just walking church to church. What about you? Been on any adventures? That's how it is, huh? Well, maybe you ain't seen as much of this world as I have. Choice? Yeah, some days. I really believe that we all have choices in life. We are truly free to decide whether to live moral lives or to throw ourselves headlong into sin and profit. But on days like today, I think maybe only God chooses, and he does so with arbitrary cruelty. Lately, my journey's been pretty ordinary. Just walking, 
church to church. Hmm, that strikes me as a shallow kind of hope. The past, I didn't know the boy, so I asked his brothers and sisters to share their memories of him. He danced, they said, loved baseball, called his father big man. Anyway, why don't you tell me a scary story? You must have heard some good ones. Hmm, tearjerkers need a little more truth in them, I think. Sadness? I was waiting in it today, that poor congregation. Normally you'd get a local pastor for something like a funeral, but the old boy died his own self, and the church's deacon is still in mourning. I've got to go now, friend, headed to a congregation over this way, long walk alone, and this boy won't leave my head. And I keep thinking, I left America when I was his age, lied on the forms, told him I was 25 when I was 17. I'd heard that the 369th Infantry Regiment needed a chaplain, so I told him I was a preacher. Don't get me wrong, I believed fervently, but I wasn't no reverend. I just memorized a few verses, some psalms, enough of the commandments to make them think I was a true man of God. Oh, my proud, arrogant lips. A sign in town says a farmer is hiring for the sugarcane harvest. A bag-eyed man drives you and ten hungry strangers out into the cane, where he leaves you. Everyone gets a hatchet, but no instruction. The foreman is missing for some reason. Nobody is sure what to do. A young man in a red jacket stuffs all the hatchets in his pack. This is stupid, he says. I'm leaving. You can get five bucks for a nice axe like this. He marches off into the cane and others follow. Don't, a young woman shouts after them. It's not right. You trot after the thief. For some reason, though, the path back out to the road is narrower and darker than you remember, and the sun is lower in the sky and the mud sucks harder at your boots than it did a minute ago. Soon, you've lost track of the others. You're pushing through the cane, coated to your thighs in mud. The sun is missing. You hear voices ahead, but you can't see anyone. You stumble out onto the bank of a pit. At the bottom, sugarcane stalks push up, twisted and crazy through a mat of bones rusted hatchets, and ripped scraps of red jacket. Shit. You turn and bolt through the cane and burst suddenly out onto the dry road and the hot sun.
Lenny's Antiques has a heady smell. Polish, maybe, or incense. Sunlight doesn't penetrate the blacked-out windows. The place is crammed with furniture and curios. The woman behind the counter beckons you over. I know the look of you. I know what you're here for. She sets a tray on the counter. On it sits a hodgepodge of stitched leather pouches of various shapes and sizes. Some have neck or wrist straps looped through them. She waves a hand across the display. Good luck, Charms. I don't want your money. You got something better. She licks her lips, holds out a flat palm. Her knife is fast. She slices a thin line across your palm, then snatches your hand and squeezes. She catches the welling blood in a murky glass vial. Your vision flickers, and as you blink, the place lightens. Sunlight streams through the windows. You are alone. As you reach the door, a man calls after you. Is this yours? His name badge reads Lenny. He's holding up a leather pouch by its strap. You take it and hurry out of the shop. Faded shotgun houses sit in rows under the tall shadows of smokestacks. A worker in full uniform hollers from a porch. Hi, traveler! Join me inside! Got some literature here! As you shut the door... The man glances out the window and draws the shades. Landlord toss you out? Ha, <laughs> don't mind me, uh, it's none of my business. He pries up a floorboard with a crowbar. You glance over the man's shoulder to see inside the compartment. Canned goods, a pile of leaflets, the wood stock of a rifle. He replaces the board and stands. He hands you a can of whole potatoes, then a leaflet which reads, No evictions, no fascists, no hunger. Headed back to the shop, but we'll have a Bible meet soon. Eh, nothing wrong with that. Careful in those boxcars, traveler, and take care of your neighbor.
Peabody Hotel. The words adorn the exterior wall, each letter the size of a window. The lobby is upholstered furniture and gold chandeliers, but such luxury is a mere accessory to the centerpiece. A travertine marble fountain in which five ducks swim. A handsome bunch of feathered fellows, all having a nice time in the water. A bellman in a blue cotton uniform, black cane cupped in his hands, takes notice of your interest in the waterfowl. Would you happen to be here to witness the duck march? A wide smile crosses the bellman's face. Oh, a newcomer. Well... This is a little ceremony I introduced. Every day I march these babies into the elevator all the way to the roof. Then I march them back down to this fountain. The bellman gestures toward the closest duck. You notice now, the ducks have had their flight feathers trimmed, though their beauty remains intact. Now, don't look so concerned. I spoil them rotten. The feathers will grow back. The bellman taps his cane on the marble. Right away, the ducks honk up a frenzy and hop out of the fountain. They beat the water out of their wings and waddle toward the elevator, guided by the bellman's cane. Magnificent. What sweet, gentle creatures. No fence, gate, or sign marks the entrance to the cemetery. Just a moment ago, you weren't surrounded by graves, and now you are. How long have you been stepping on dead folks, fully unaware? A wood board, bleached white. Unknown. The word was painted on black by a steady hand each letter signed with a flourish. Whoever made this memorial had more compassion than money. The other graves are the same. Unknown. 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 Handwritten. Nondescript. You walk for a while, reading every marker in sight, and not once do you find a name? <laughs> 